thinking just randomly <laughs> about advice right and i think i was thinking about advice based um solely upon this book that i'm st still reading now um which i've recommended to you guys i think on here before a couple of times um it's called uh digital minimalism why is it not showing up properly i don't know why it's doing that it doesn't let me show it up but it's this book here it's called digital minimalism digital mini mini digital minimalism right uh screen mirroring what screen mirroring do does that work if it's let me see if I the screen mirroring stuff works. I can maybe load it up on here on the screen. Looking for an Apple TV. Have I got an Apple TV or have I got a normal TV? I think I've got a normal TV, haven't I? Ba, 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 ba. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's not going to work. I don't know. Will you work? Come on. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There's a book called um, Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. I actually get it up here on the screen for you guys to see. Da, 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 da. Digital Minimalism. Uh, Cal Newport. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. So there's this book that I'm reading right here. It's not the same cover. I've got a different cover. The cover that I've got has like a little USB cable that's ripped, which is this one there. Right, which is this one here. Can you see that one? It's that one. But anyway, this book essentially is something that's got me thinking about advice, right? In in digital minimalism, Cal Newport argues that you know we are way too attached to our digital devices, we are way too attached to social media, and we don't take enough time to be alone with our own thoughts, to be quote unquote bored, um, to consider the direction of our lives, and to generally be more connected to the world and around us outside of our digital gadgets and our social media. Um, he also argues that social media platforms and tech companies have kind of sold us this lie that they're actually enabling us to connect or to broaden our community or to get to know people like you know from all walks of life. But essentially, what they're doing is that they are cutting us off from our immediate community, people in and amongst, in and around us who actually need our physical um, presence, right? When you know in conversation or mentally for us to be there and not be wondering and kind of checking on our phone and stuff. And there's a section in the book where he says something along the lines of. Um, We've lost kind of the ability to think through issues, to think through things, to really kind of get to the core of an issue and to give ourselves good advice, right? Which has kind of made me think, and I kind of added onto it and thought, you know what? Maybe that's why there's such a prevalence and such a need these days for self-help gurus, right? Because a self-help guru, um, in the kind of layman sense, is going to help you answer the questions of your life that you haven't quite figured out yet right they're going to somehow provide you with a path or with a methodology or an ideology or a mindset or a set of practices or some steps or some practical tips that you can then apply to your own life in order to get to the place that you want to get to achieve your dreams or to become a better person blah 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 and i was thinking maybe that's why there's such a prevalence of it I and mean, that's maybe why such people are so um um so ready to absorb things from self-help gurus to biblical preachers to sorry, religious preachers wherever they may be to people on tv shows and stuff they're very um willing to sit down there and hear somebody else tell them what they should do with their life instead of actually reflecting on what maybe they should do with their own life right the reason why i say that is because most of the time no the reason why i say that to give a bit of context is that when i was growing up and when i was a kid especially in school i was always kind of um referred to or I was always kind of um, spoken about as a person who would give good advice, right? Um, oh, go to Agassino. You know, he'll he'll get he'll give you some good advice. He'll know what to say. Um, he's probably gonna have something intelligent to say about it. He probably have might have a good idea. And then obviously, when you're young, it can kind of be a good thing for your ego. It kind of gives you a bit of pat on the back. You feel quite important. You feel you feel intelligent and stuff. But the older you get, the more you start to really question how smart you are or how much of what they're saying is bs and if the smoke they're blowing up your ass is real or not because the older you become the more you start to realize that you know what i don't even have my own stuff in order right why would anyone want to hear about what i have to say it doesn't make any sort of sense right it's like taking advice from so that's about taking diet dietary advice from somebody that's clinically obese it doesn't make any sort of sense right they've not proven that they can get their own health in check or in order why would they suddenly have the right or have the reverence or have the audience to tell people what else what they should do so i kind of felt the same sort of way and then over time i started to realize that what actually happens is that when people are asking you for advice they're not asking you really for advice they're just asking you to say what they're already thinking most of the time especially if it's your friend if you have, if you've ever realized it if your friends asking you for advice and you tell them the brutal honest truth sometimes it can really go a long way to breaking or ending that relationship 
Because people don't really want to hear the truth. They just want to hear you say what they're thinking in their subconscious. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, true, you've got a point. And why do these people say you've got a point? Because usually it's something they've already been thinking about themselves. So I think digital minimalism, what's that's kind of so far what I've learned from the book is that this idea of like cutting yourself away from cutting yourself off from social media or allowing or putting social media or smartphones back in the box of it being a tool and it not being something that rules your life because especially i think the general premise of the of the whole uh, book is that when steve jobs first introduced the iphone he introduced it more so as an ipod that also makes calls right but now it's turned into this other thing right it's turned into this kind of all-consuming um media platform especially if when you say you have imagine if you're the kind of guy that doesn't have a laptop or you only use your work laptop and you don't you have your smartphone you've got netflix on there you've got your social media accounts you've got your messaging accounts all your life is consumed on this digital device so there's no real you know there's no real chance for you to look up smothered 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 trees understand where you are and make a rational decision about your future it doesn't exist so you if anything you're going to look for the quickest and easiest answer self-help gurus youtube video a self-help book whatever it may be motivational speech and of course, those things are fleeting because they don't really get to the core of what the issue is. And who, who, who knows the core of the issue? You. No one else has any other insight about it than you yourself. But nowadays, I think we distract ourselves to the point where, and sometimes I think it's on purpose. We do it purposely because I think life can be quite harsh. Life can be quite brutal. Uh, life can be unforgiving. So the last thing you want to do is confront your demons and really face up to the issue at hand really kind of answer or ask yourself some poignant questions reveal some home truths that you've been trying to avoid you don't want that so you kind of try and distract yourself as much as possible similar to what people do when they drink or they or they you know abuse alcohol or abuse drugs right some usually sometimes it could be because you know recreationally you just enjoy um the feeling of getting high or getting blacked out drunk but most of the time there is an underlying issue there where you're trying to avoid or run away or ignore something that you are know you need to address but unfortunately these issues don't go away you wake up after a hangover and that issue is still there so i think digital minimalism is going to be a hard thing for the public to embrace because i think at the heart of it it goes down it goes back to people actually understanding or acknowledging that they have an issue which is something a lot of people don't want to say they have an issue about right um, nowadays people aren't bored anymore any kind of minute or second that passes by where you're idle, idling around, you can just quickly turn to your phone, um, browse something, check something, uh, you know, keep yourself stimulated that way. Um, I'm sure you can't remember the last article you read on the internet that really added anything to your life, but at the, at the time, they all seem like the most important thing to read. There's all these constructions happening, but I think it's going to take a long time for the public to really embrace digital minimalism. Because like I said, I think it's going to really strip away the issues that we're having. And again, I think in the book even mentions that um, some research has shown that ang- the level of anxiety has gone up, you know, tenfold with some of the young people. And most of it has been attributed to smartphones, right? This idea of missing out, this idea of comparing yourself to people you probably shouldn't be comparing yourself to um, has kind of led kids to be anxious about the future, to be worried about things they probably shouldn't be worried about, to be involved in political movements or social change that is way, way, way above their level of understanding. Um, why so because they're anxious about everything everything's a life or death situation whether it's the environment politics society in general right it's all kind of it's it, on, on the internet on social because they have to get you engaged everything feels like a life or death moment nothing feels nothing's just a report as it is nothing's just a fleeting moment everything's like you have to listen to this right now you gotta check this out you'll never guess what he or she said um so yeah it got me thinking about advice and just in general you know the lack of advice i have had in my life in general um i don't really seek advice not because i'm smart because i don't really have a big social group and when i do get the advice it doesn't necessarily sit well with me it doesn't necessarily sound intelligent it doesn't necessarily sound reason doesn't necessarily sound like it comes from a wide ranging it doesn't sound like it comes from like a you know a far pov it just sounds like someone just making a snap judgment or something you just told them when I try and take the time to kind of understand the issue at hand and then try and make some kind of nuanced argument against it or for it, again, I'm not to whack. It's not to say that I'm better at it or anyone, but it's just I don't know. And then, of course, the reason why I think like that is because, by and large, I have the answer for the most part. I know subconsciously what I should and shouldn't do, but I'm not willing or I'm not brave enough to face up to what I have to do to get there. So you kind of ignore it. You kind of put it to one side by delaying it. And the way you delay it, ask for advice. Hey, do you know what I should do about waste of time? 
waste of bloody time so yeah um i don't know man i don't know advice for me is a weird one it's always been a weird one for me like how do you ask for it when do you ask for it when should you take it when it's given to you um who do you go and ask is there a way to kind of rate their decision making process over the years which again sounds mean but it's the truth right some people's advice does weigh differently than others it's just a matter of fact that's why people pay the big bucks to go see certain people talking q and q and a's and stuff right because they value their advice more than others it's just what it is um i don't know strange 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 place to be in but yeah i recommend you check it out kyle newport digital minimalism is out now in all good bookshops i have it on an audible i have it on my ibooks account so you can check it out on there as well i recommend you check it it's a really really good book very eye-opening and will have you questioning a lot of your own um, life choices and decisions you've made so far uh 